right, number 16 of the Public Witness Soul Winning Lessons. And taking your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verse 16. As we look at this part and review, you can go back to the videos and the audio, is not everybody will get saved. We are not expected or to expect 100% proof. We are told to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Paul says, I have planted, Paul's watered, God gave the increase. We're not out there for results. We're out there to tell lost people about Jesus Christ. Problem is today it's become results, it's become numbers, it's become competition. In Romans 10, 16, the same chapter we've been dealing with with people's souls, with their hearts and with their mouth, it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Where do you go with there? Where do you go that, oh, we've had this great revival in the church and everybody got saved. That defies what the gospel is according to the scriptures. For Christ, the Bible says, died for many, not all. Let's look at Mark chapter 4, verse 8. And when I'm sending you out, if this is your first time, or if you've already involved in the ministry and we are encouraging you, I'm sending you out realizing what the fact is. Not everybody's going to get saved. We had one time in our public ministry in Daytona Beach. One of the police officers came up to me and said, well, where's your crowds? And I said, sir, in some kind of way, the Bible says there would not be crowds. I realize in the ministry, as you turn to Mark chapter 4, verse 8, the ministry of Jesus Christ is for all the people from Dan to Bathsheba. From the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, 12 men stayed too with Jesus those three and a half years. And yet in the end, one betrayed him and went and committed suicide. One got angry and cussed and denied him and went somewhere. That at the cross of Jesus, as he's suffering and dying and bleeding. Only John, the brother of James, is there at the cross. Where is everybody else? So looking at the life of Jesus that we are to follow, there were more against him, there were more that cried crucify him, than the none that stood up and took his defense. In Mark 4, 8, and other fell on good ground, this is the good part, and did yield fruit that sprung up and increased, and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. There is good ground. I don't want to depreciate you. I don't want to send you off. No, there's going to be no fruit. And it did yield fruit that sprung up and increased, 30, 60, and 100. Now look what God has given us through the Holy Spirit. There are some people that will do 30. There are some people who have done 60. And there are some people who have done 100. And yet, Matthew 7, 13. And there is no condemnation. For the guy that does 30, he doesn't do the 60. There is no rebuke for the guy that does 60 and hasn't done 100. Now, personally, I have not ever been told or have shown or have seen or have witnessed anyone has done 100%. You say, what about Jesus? Okay, what about Jesus? Matthew 7, 13. 
Enter ye the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go there at. And I am not to depreciate the work and the merit of Jesus Christ of the cross and the gospel that he suffered and died, according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scripture. And yet even Jesus Christ did not get 100% of the seed that he put in. And by church standards today, that would be a failure that no one got saved. And yet there are many who will not get saved, even by the blood of atonement, even by the love of God that he sent his only begotten son, that there are many that will go the broad way, which leads to destruction. So many of the soul-winning tactics and teachings of many churches today would call Jesus a loser because he has not 100%. I am not going to get 100%. I don't even know if I reach the 30. I think as far as the people who got saved as God using me as a vessel, I think I could probably count them the fingers on my hand. And maybe less. I, I I don't keep track. I have men's names in my Bible and my prayer book who have asked Christ to say, "Was it real?" What? That's not my judge. And there are people out there, you know, they're the sixteen to look down to thirty or look up. No, no, it's not about that. Because let's look at Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And enter ye the straight gate. That's the way to go. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Many will go to destruction. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Is the way the cross leads home, many are going to go to destruction. And a few will go the way, the truth, and the light. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which, which is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name? In thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Many. And yet the world preaches, all will be judged. And all God will be so loving, so grateful that all will enter into heaven. No, that is not a Bible teaching. That is a lie from the pit of hell because Jesus, that is the words of Jesus. If you have a le red lettered Bible, Matthew 7, 13, 14, 21 to 23 are red lettered. They are the words of Jesus Christ, the one who went to the cross, the one who suffered, the one who died, the one that was buried according to scriptures tells us many will not believe. And Jesus Christ is not a failure. And it's sorry to say by the soul winning tactics, I'm using that word correctly, of modern churches today, Jesus would be a loser because not everybody believed. And I'm here to tell you not everybody will believe. Revelation 20 verse 15. I don't want you to go out there with a lie. I don't want you going out there with a false hope. You say, well, brother, what's that false hope? Everybody's going to listen to you and everybody's going to cling to Jesus and everybody's going to get right and everything's going to be hunky-dory and man, you're just going to have people come knocking on your door because they want to know about Jesus. I'm here to tell you the only people going to come knocking on your door is the Jehovah Witnesses to get you away from Jesus. 
Now, we've been Daytona Beach in this place, I think, two or three, maybe four years. I have had not one, <coughs> excuse me, I have had not one Baptist church come knocking on our door, but multiple Jehovah Witnesses come knocking on our door. You can't win them if you don't go. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And there are people out there working for Satan, and they're working much harder than Christians. Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses put the Bible-believing Christians to shame. It is part of their ritual for the Mormon church to go out in a missionary field. And while the true church of Jesus Christ shed by his blood, by the finished work of the cross, coming out of that empty tomb. And they do nothing. But they expect 100%. They do nothing, but they expect 100%. And the ones that do love Christ, and those that do try, they, they, they have a prayer life, they have prayer people. Coming up, they would ask people to pray, say, you know, pray for Bob I met on the street, pray for Phil, pray for Fred, for Phyllis, pray for these people I met today. I've got the witness to them. And they turned away, pray for their heart, pray for these group of people. It's your heart being burdened. In Revelation 20, verse 15, for all going to be saved, and whosoever was not written, was Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, does that sound like everybody's going to heaven? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The Bible says over and over as far as the relationship with Christ and people in the world, many. He died for many. He died for all. But many will go the broad way. John chapter 3. If everyone were to be saved, then John the Baptist makes a weird statement in John 3.36. And we've got to get off the false motion that all are saved. And maybe that's what's stopping some Bible-believing Christians from, from serving the Lord and witnessing. Because maybe they got the concept in their head, I don't need a witness. They're all going to go to heaven anyway. That's wrong. That's false. And John the Baptist says, he that believeth on the Son. Isn't that what we've been talking about? John chapter 10 has everlasting life. That's not the end of the verse. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding on him. Yes, Christ died for that person that will not believe. And yet in his unbelief, he will die and burn in hell, get judged at the great white throne judgment and end off in the lake of fire forever. Not a hundred percent will get saved. I have got relatives, aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins. They have died. And many of them, I'm pretty sure, are in hell today. There has never been from their lips a testimony of ever trusting Christ as their Savior. There's a couple of them. They could be saved. I don't know. But am I going to say my entire family saved? I'd be foolish. When I go out in the streets and preach the gospel, when I go sit at a table and hand out gospel tracts and booklets and talk to people, are they all going to get right? No. And anybody who thinks that they will get right, they will listen, they will adhere to you, has never been out in witness. They've never had radishes thrown at them. 
They've never had somebody try to drown out the preaching. They have never had somebody come stick their finger in your face and say, that's not what Jesus would do. You've never had somebody say, well, you're turning people away. I let my light shine. Judge not the ACB judge. You're going to close the businesses. You have no right being here. And by people like that, how do you explain everybody's going to heaven? When we have read the scriptures say not all. Now some will. Some won't. And it's hard because we do have loved ones in our family. They're living, they're going to die, or they've already died. And as far, as far as I believe personally, and this is personal, and I could be wrong, but I believe some way, somehow, I've witnessed to pretty much all my family. Pretty sure I have. And there are yet some who died, and I believe they're in hell. There are some who died, I know they're in hell, just by their conduct, just by their rejection. And there are some, uh, positive, maybe they are in heaven, to God be the glory. But do I go out in a public ministry tomorrow and Saturday? Everybody's going to listen. Everybody's going to get right. Everybody, no, they won't. And I want you to know the truth. From somebody who's been, and I still don't remember, uh, I'm going to say, I believe 2004 is when I began the street ministry. And that's so, 14 years on the street ministry. And there today, Saturday, I'll be preaching, and I'll just look at the people like, and you feel for them. Because you know what their outcome is. If they continue to go living like they're living, without Christ. There's even been times, oh, I plead the guys, there's something I can do. And the reply of God is, you're already doing it. You're preaching the gospel. That's all you can do. With what you preach and the Holy Spirit convicted them of sin and, and trying to work their hard heart. And when we look at the 30, 16, 100%, whoa. Oh, realize if someone were to bring 30%, that means 70% are not going to listen. 70% are not going to adhere. If there are 60%, 40% are not going to listen. They're not going to hear. And I'm not questioning God, the Holy Spirit, but I don't know who would the hundredth be. I wouldn't even say Paul, because, uh, let's see if I can find this. Acts. Acts. Oh. Let me look up here. Even Paul's not 100%. I'm looking at some notes here. Hold on. All right, let's go to Acts 17. Please. Now I'm going to say not even Paul was 100%. Now, Acts 17, verses 22, 23, 24, 25, he's preaching on Mars Hill. And he's preaching the gospel to heathen who have a statue to the unknown God. And he's revealing to them who that unknown God is. 
And when we close off with, with Acts 17, verse 32, And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, Jesus, some mocked, all right, they rejected. Others said, we will hear thee again of this man. We'll listen to you again. So Paul departed from amongst them. How be a certain men claved unto him and believe. Well, that's what we're looking for. That's what we want. We want people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But then we read some of them up. Some of them made fun of the preacher. Some made fun of the message. Some made fun of Jesus. They did not get saved. Paul did not have 100%. Jesus Christ, God, our salvation, the author of our souls of salvation to God. Many will go the broad way. Respectfully, even Jesus doesn't get 100%. Now, on the other side, again, someone who, who's been in the work in the ministry and some of you, we don't know what some of the fruit has done. We may look at people that are not listening. We don't know. There are seeds in the world that must be eaten by birds and digested in their system. That when they're deposited out from the bird, they will plant. And there may be seeds that we've been, as far as the public ministry, any ministry, has been carried off. And may have been dropped somewhere upon soil that it was able to sprout and roots. And that's the very lesson of Mark chapter 4. I remember one time my wife was talking about the garbage out in the out in the dirt pile, out in the compost pile where we throw things. She came up to me and said, hey, look, found some tomato plants. We didn't plant them there. But seed had gone that far and planted itself. Now Daytona Beach is a tourist area. Where we lived in Connecticut, it's a tourist area. And we have gathered seed out to people who go all over the world. I've been in places in Daytona and back in Connecticut. We've dealt with people who are foreigners from another land. And have received the gospel track. Have heard the gospel preach. What has that seed done today? I have no idea. There are people right now, today, I checked the SoundCloud, the audio files of these messages. The United States is still top. But we is today, secondly, is a well-known area of Indonesia that keeps listening to these videos. I mean, the, the, the audio. Indonesia is ranked twice, second, many a day. When it comes to our audio file. And then third today looking at it has been the Russia Federation. Today the Russian Federation is ranked third of hearing audio messages. What is going on in America? What is going on in Indonesia? What is going on in the, Feder uh, the Russian Federation? I have no idea. Now, they may be using it to, to gain information on me, to haul me off. They may be gathering information, oh, look at that dumb American, you don't know nothing. They're mocking, like they did for Paul. There may be people say, I want to hear that again. I want to get more information. I want to dig into it, like Acts 17. And maybe there are people who are believing on Jesus Christ, Acts 17. 
He said, what would be the more? I'd be more that they would reject him and mock him, according to the scriptures. And because I'm not seeing results with my eyes, does not mean that we are to stop. It ain't over. And even if I were to die, my ministry is not over. Paul's ministry is not over. John's ministry is not over. There are people still studying the book of Revelation correctly. There are still people studying the Gospels correctly. There are people who are going out, Mark 16, are going, going out, Matthew, going all the world and preach or teach the, and publish the Gospel. If someone were to get saved by me preaching, Mark would have a count to that fruit because I use Mark 16 as going all the world and preach the gospel. People are still getting saved under Paul's lessons of Romans chapter 10. Now me, I don't use the Romans road, but I will use, if I'm dealing with someone seriously, Romans chapter 10. I will use Romans chapter 3. And I've had a few people in the prison where they've gotten saved. They've asked Christ as their Savior. And not only has God credited that to me, but he's credited to Paul, who has been dead for hundreds and thousands of years. And if we do not see fruit today, we don't know what that seed's going to do tomorrow, Lord willing. But then again, we cannot go out there I expect everybody's going to fall, drop, and kneel and ask God to save them. You need to expect that you're going to get more ridicule. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Have I become your enemy because I, because I told you the truth? For the three and a half years work of Jesus Christ, they gave him a crucifixion cross. Let me, let me check this book out. Let me show you. Let's check this book. Find the page. Okay, listen, li listen. All they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Stephen was stoned. Matthew was slain in Ethiopia. Mark was dragged through the streets unto dead. Luke was hanged. Peter and Simeon were crucified. Andrew was tied to a cross. James was beheaded. Philip, Philip was crucified and stoned. Wow. Bartholomew was flayed alive. Have you ever flayed a fish? It's usually dead. Bartholomew, they, they skinned him alive. Thomas, they pierced with lances. James the last was thrown from the temple and beaten to death. Jude was shot to death with arrows. Matthias was stoned to death. And Paul was beheaded. That's the mark of public witnessing. And when you got the mark of huge church, big HD television, the bouncy ball instead of a hymn. The lovely preacher, preacher or preacherette with the false Bible out of their mouth. The kumbaya swaying back and forth through the music or through the tones. It's primarily a public ministry that is not of the Bible. It is not of God. I'm not telling you you're not going to get results, but you may not even see the results. Honestly, you're not going to get the 100%. Honestly, you will have people come up and they will thank you for doing what you're doing. They will give you a cup of water. They will give you a bottle of water. We've had coffee given to us. We have water. 
I don't know what that drink my wife was giving the other day. But hey, they gave it in the Lord. We've had people give us many things. We've also had people stand in our face and cuss us out every foul word in the name of Christian, of course. We've had people stand in our face and tell us that we are going against the Bible, living the Bible, as they don't even know what the Bible is. We've had people try to drown and shut us up. And I have seen people bow their head and seriously ask Christ as their Savior. I had a man one time I was helping out, to close with this, supposedly a preacher in a place where preachers don't belong. And I dealt with him two or three times. And it was the last time we were together. And he just fired at me. He just chewed me out. And blah, 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 blah. He was just using me or buttering me up like a turkey a few weeks before Thanksgiving. And my remarks was, look where you are. Look where I am. You can't leave. I'm going home in about a half hour. <laughs> and I've had people tell, well, where's your results? What's the outcome? And the answer's always been, I just preach the gospel. That's what God told me to do. I don't save them. I don't put notches on my belt. Because I didn't do it. The preaching of the gospel is what's saved. And not everybody's going to like it. And that's just the plain truth. But don't stop doing it. I hope I'm not discouraging you. But I hope when you go out, you suit up, you put the armor of God's given you to realize. What beholds in the battle? There'll still be enemies of the cross out there. And you'll meet with them. And you'll cry for them. And you will pray for them. You will even seek God. What can you do to save them? I've done it. I've looked at them. I saw them. They have been angry at me and I'm in, I'm, I'm in tears in my heart because I know what God has said. Be faithful. Be faithful in prayer. Be faithful in studying your Bible. Be faithful in any public ministry, even if it's not the one you're assigned to. Get gospel tracts out anywhere and everywhere. I could go into that with the layers of what God's doing with the gospel tract ministry. It's just beyond. It's a wonder. It's wonderful. It's great. Exciting. But there will be people at the great white throne judgment that God will say, depart from me, work iniquity. I never knew you. And they may have been people you witnessed to. They may even be your family, your co-workers, your friends. It's nice to think that everybody will be saved, but that's not the truth. And I'm not going to lie to you. 